Voilà, chat rooms on. And welcome to the chat room. South African freeway traffic has been on a rapid increase. And over the years, traffic has increased by 15 minutes in peak hour. As a result, roads have needed to be maintained regularly. Now, these are some of the challenges facing the South African National Roads Agency Limited, SANRAL, as they aim to deliver on their mandate. The eToll system, which has been their proposed solution, but the system has been received with much publicized controversy. Etolls consists of 49 gantries on Gauteng highways. The gantries charge people by electronically identifying the number of plates of vehicles that drive under them. So each time a vehicle passes, a toll is charged. The cost is determined by the kilometer distance which the entry represents. Many criticize it for being very costly. A reported 14 billion over six years, impossible to implement properly because of its complexity and a threat to the province's economic well-being. So Namsla and Jigo on the chat room, we discussed the issue in length and tried to understand why and how hardworking citizens should now include e-toll charges within their already tight budgets. Before we meet our studio guests, take a look at a single mother who lives in the south of Johannesburg and uses Gauteng's roads daily. Ukenzani Mashaba wants to know why she should pay e toll. Let's take a look at this. Chat rooms on. Let's chat about a start. I'm a concerned citizen regarding the e tolling system which is coming in. And my major worry is that I don't know how I'm going to find myself manage them to pay all for all the costs of the road. Throughout the process of the whole e tolling uh, I think there has been an anti-campaign of some nature. And it's not based on the fact that we don't want the e toll but I guess the timing was wrong. And it's a known fact all over the world that the economic meltdown has affected a lot of people. And here we are, discussing the issue of a toll gate, which it's, it's really unnecessary. It's really unnecessary because the fact is known that there is a number of people who are not happy with that. We all know that uh, the government's idea is to push the e-toll to go through, but the fact of the matter is that uh, what about the people saying? Now, my issue is purely based on a simple issue. On a daily basis, I am a, a car driver. I spend money for toll gates. I spend money yearly to pay for the road infrastructure. I spend money every day because I'm in the city where it's governed by, toll, by, by parking system that we have to pay. I deal with clients on a daily basis. I imagine when I'm consulting with a client, he parks for three, four hours. That is a daily bread. Just one hour can buy bread for a family. Now it's basically up to everybody to really say their saying. And which has been said, it's, it's unnecessary to do it again. But the issue is that, do they really care? Whoever is involved in the tolling system, whoever cares about the people, surely they'll sit down and find an amicable solution. As we're speaking right now, we're living under the scale of another petrol hike. Now, petrol on its own, one litre, it's above a loaf of brown bread. Now, if petrol shoots up to 15, 16 rand and it holds, on the other hand, and maintaining the car, you know, the saying that um, you have a car, surely you can afford. It, it, I think it's a hogwash mentality. We don't buy the cars because sometimes we love them. It's the necessity. And if the mentality again is that all cars which are there are for rich people, then I bet to differ. Today we're talking about the National Credit Act affecting everybody. And this is indeed a reality. Can you imagine having an installment for eight homes and you fail to pay that? What will happen? We don't want to be disobedient citizens. 
we want to play a major role in this country and against that background we require everybody to sit down and level up and decide what is in the best interest of the country is it all in the best interest of the country currently or it all is going to squeeze the marginalized the existing tolling system which is there we are paying but we have not yet reaped the benefit of that now what proof is there that we're going to reap the benefit of the new tolling system? There's none. It's high time that we take an active role, we look at where our taxes go, and this is one issue which we strongly need to discuss. Now, on top of that, if it all exists in Gauteng, I bet you even the retailers are going to increase their fees. The bread which we're buying at 8 rand, 9 rand, I bet it's going to go 50 cent higher. And there are so many rumors where the money goes and all that, which haven't been quashed even today. But the fact of the matter is that we can't afford. I, personally, I really cannot afford to pay for the toll gates. I'm struggling as I am right now with the parking, with the road, just maintaining the car on its own. But the truth of the matter, if you can look at our finances, you'll be so shocked how we survive. It's because we really believe that if we work together, do something, we can find a solution. And on this one, I don't think the e is a solution to the problem. Chat rooms on. Let's chat about a start. That was Kensani's story. Question is, do you relate? So public protest is saying, don't buy e-tags and make e-tolling unmanageable. However, this has a negative impact on society. It is bad citizenship, as the ultimate aim is to benefit all South Africans. Join us for more on this discussion after the break. We'll be right back. The debate is always good. Let's chat about a start. Welcome back to the chat room. Today we're talking e-tolling and before the breaks, we introduce it to Kenzani Mashaba who says she doesn't understand Uguti why Mela Patale e -tol. She joins us now in studio. Also joining us in studio from Arta, we've got Mr. Wayne Duvenage, Uput Wusmu Zipeng from Kosatu, as well as Mishek Shabalala. Gentlemen, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Siswam, we saw on the insert that uh, Basically, Uti Aufunu Patala e told. But just tell us in detail what are some of the things that are making you say, Uti, you shouldn't be paying e toll? Okay, um, I'm a driver, and on a daily basis, I travel from Ekaya, which is in the south of Johannesburg, mm -hmm. to the office in town. And between those two, I pass e toll gate, e me toll gate. Every year I pay in Deloitte mode, mm -hmm. which is, uh, we've accepted as normal. And then on top of that, when a parking, which you have to pay on a daily basis, should you fail to pay that hour, there's a ticket for you coming. Mm -hmm. Now, these are not the daily thing which we all wake up and say, look, this every month I have a budget for this thing. These are things which can happen. It can happen really needed to anyone. The money which we're paying for the yearly road infrastructure, surely, Whoever made the budget of e-tolling should have considered that first to say, if I go beyond this, what implication is about to Gubandu? I've got two kids who I drop every day in the morning. One is at primary, one is at a crash. And I'm bound to pass through the country, the, the current one. Two of them on top of the toll gate. Mm. Now, as a citizen of the country, it's got nothing to do with disobedient, but it's got to do with thinking for the lay citizen person in the country. As a citizen, where do I get the benefit? And when do they listen to me as politicians? And when I say that, I've heard it, it's enough. Mm. And it's not about enough. The, the, the pocket has been stretched way out of control. And when would it stop? Okay. Mishak, you on the other hand um, have purchased an e-tag. Um, surely some of the challenges Ukensani is talking about are real to many South Africans. Yes. How do you see the whole e-tolling system? For me, there's nothing wrong with the e-tolling. What's wrong with it is, is that is it going to stop at some point or not? Because mm. uh, if it's going to be continuous, then it means that we're going to be 
uh, we're going to continue spending whereby already the debt has already been paid to actually build the infrastructure for us to have e-tolling. I realized, I came to a realization that either way, we're going to have to pay because if the infrastructure has already been uh, built. And my uh, justification for buying the e-tag uh, was that at least uh, I can take advantage of the discounts that they give. And uh, that's how I came about buying the e-tag. Because mm. uh, uh, I saw that, OK, I could fight it. However, since the infrastructure has been built, that will be in vain. And what, what I can do is basically fight for how much I'm charged, mm. but I am going to be charged either way. OK. Wayne, um, Kanzani's story, as well as some of the issues that Mishak has, has raised, mm. uh, is basically a general consensus amongst, amongst many South Africans. Oh. What are, are some of the real issues uh, that we may not have touched on? Okay. Well, e-tolling doesn't benefit South Africans. It, act it actually robs them. And Kansani's uh, concerns are very real concerns for many people, hundreds of thousands of people. They just simply can't afford it. We're not saying, and the public aren't saying, don't build new roads or good roads. We need the infrastructure to grow our economy. Uh, and that's not the issue here. The issue is this mechanism by which they want to tax or get the money out of the citizens. This system is going to cost, best case scenario, 1.3 billion rand a year. That's a cost that motorists have to pay over and above the road, which is about 2 billion rand a year, or 1.9 to 2 billion. Now, we've got other me mechanisms in place, such as the fuel levy, there's, there's shadow tolling, there's um, the national fiscus. That, that, those are the mechanisms that cost almost zero. Mm. So if you've got to weigh up the option, 1.3 billion rand a year or zero, which one would society take? Mm. On top of that, the real issues are the alternatives. There's no alternatives for, for most people on, on, on these routes, for different routes to take. We're held captive on these roads. The transport system is, is, is not there and geared up enough. They're working on that, and that's mm. a few years down the line. So, quite frankly, this is a waste of taxpayers' money. We were not consulted as we should have been constitutionally, and, uh, and we've seen this failing around the world. We see it failing right now, a new system similar to this in Portugal, and it is not going to get the compliance levels that are required to make it work. Where it's worked, and you look at the London inner city congestion charge, it worked very well because the mayor of London got very involved with the public, and he allowed the public into the process. And they helped him set the rate, they, but they also said we need an extra so many buses. He put on another 300 buses to get people in and out of town. Extra park and rides. Mm. The rate had to be right. And with that came the success of the London inner city congestion charge. You guys have been um, having go slows on the freeway, etc., against e tolling. What is your gripe about it? Well, uh, Kosato has been consistently saying that uh, firstly, e tolls will add the burden to the poor. Most people currently in South Africa do not have trust in our public transport system. As a result, they rely heavily on carpooling and sharing cars. Now, if there's going to be an extra cost in your trans the transport mode that you use, it simply means that the working class, those that are working, mm. earning the lowest, will be heavily affected. The countries are in place. Um, the e-tolling seems to be happening. It's going to happen according to Sanra. Um, things are what they are. What do you think should be done given the circumstances now? Well, uh, they, the countries can be put to, 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 to better use. Uh, firstly, you can use them uh, to monitor traffic. Uh, well, instead of having police there standing under bridges, as we always see, we can use these countries because they already have these mechanisms, mm -hmm. these tools to monitor traffic. So you can use them to monitor traffic and ensure uh, road compliance. But to say that we must continue using it was just because there is no alternative. There are alternatives mm. to, 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 to use, to better use the, the, the countries. So now government must consider such options. In fact, in our submissions, we have always been raising this, that the it was must be scrapped, not that they must be demolished. It, it, it won't be correct for, mm. for, for that to happen. So they must be there in place, but they must not be used as a user pay uh, system, but it must be used to monitor traffic and ensure compliance. Not for tolling. Wayne, can I have your closing comment? What do you want to leave South Africans with with regards to e-tolling? 
Well, it's still not too late to stop this. Um, we would like to see government uh, rethink the strategy. Uh, we'd like them to work closer with uh, society to find the best mechanisms in place, and they are out there. We want to move forward so that we can get investors here. Uh, we don't think it's wise that government picks a fight with its citizens and drives a wedge further between itself and citizens, and e-tolling will do that. We hope that they come to their senses, they don't launch e-tolling, and that we find a way that is most equitable and most efficient for the society to pay for these roads, because we want to pay for them. We just do not want to be ripped off. We do not want our money to be going overseas. We want to pay, uh, continue with road infrastructure upgrades. Thank you. Kansani? What are your final words and what is your plea um, to government with regards to e-tolling? My plea, uh, currently, and I'm saying this with authority because I do have other people I speak to, that government should get rid of the system. It is not a system which is worth to have. Given the fact that it's not about just driving a car and all that, everything is going to be affected from bread, from butter, which if everybody, you talk to all the retailers, said, we have no choice but to increase the prices because it's an extra price amount which we never um, um, budgeted for. Now, there's nothing as horrible as dividing the nation with just one small thing. This was not supposed to be happening yeah. if the government was listening. Yeah. And it's a plea, it's a plea to all politicians that they must be, come down to look at the ordinary person. Mm. We're not talking about the marginalized or whatever, but just an ordinary South African. How do they live? We don't have the, uh, we can't afford all the blue lights and all the luxury. I'm just an ordinary person who wants to live a good life, a simple life, and obey the law. Mm. Yeah. I don't want to be against the law. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us in the chat room today. So join us after the break. We're joined by Mr. Vusi Mona from Sunral, who's going to shed some light and, and clarify some of the issues raised in this discussion. We'll be right back. The debate is always good. Let's chat about a start. The debate is always good. Let's chat about a start. Welcome back to the chat room. We're talking e-tolling today and as promised, joining us today is Mr. Vusimona from Sunral uh, to answer some of the questions that we tackled before the break. Uh, Bob Vusi, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Sarah. But Vusi, please can you help clarify um, some of these issues and issues that are raised by many South Africans uh, with regards to e-tolling? Let me just give a brief historical context where this project comes from. It was conceptualized way back in 1996 by the Gauteng Provincial Government because they were looking at the road capacity of various highways around Houghton and projecting what's going to happen to traffic levels going forward. Where else has Sunral done this in the past? Well, Sunral operates um, toll roads and non-toll roads, right? All the toll roads that you see in the country, uh, except the one in the Western Cape, all the ones you see in the country, uh, they fall under Sunral. Mm. Um, there are instances where we'll go to the private sector, give the private sector a concession period to manage a road, like your N3 to Devon, mm. your N4 to um, Pumalanga. Uh, those are our roads, but we've given them to the private sector because they brought in capital, which because of constraints on uh, uh, government budgets, we couldn't lay out the capital. So no. they will bring in the capital for the right to collect tolls okay. for a period of time. Here's what people are saying, right? Um, people are saying that there have been instances of the e-tolling system working in different parts of the world. So I think ultimately, it's if, if whatever needs to be done to help build the infrastructure of this country um, needs to be done, right? And yeah. in this case, you're saying it's the e-tolling system. The citizens of this country are saying government did not consult um, citizens with regards to this the way they should have. You know, the argument that we have not consulted actually was put forward in court and it failed. As I sit with you here, there is a judgment by the uh, Houghton North uh, High Court which threw that argument out of the window. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the opponents, you remember, Alta took us to court and said that we had not uh, consulted sufficiently. A judge ruled that Sandral did everything it could reasonably do mm. to consult. The problem we have as South Africans is that when opportunities are availed to us 
to make inputs into laws that are going to govern us. Very few South Africans, and let's be honest, very few South Africans come forward. South Africans are saying, um, I want my country to develop. However, I'm not sure if I want it to develop this way because I can't afford it. Sandra and government is saying, you guys have exhausted every single option in which you can see how best uh, to develop the infrastructure of this country and this came out to be the best solution. Now some people will sit here and listen to you but at the end of the day you are going to have people who are going to say, I mean Kosatu is saying people must not go and, and, and buy e-tags, that they must literally boycott them. What are the consequences of that? Well you know South Africa is a constitutional democracy. Uh, in this country we agreed, all of us, that we are going to live by the rule of law and not by the rule of the jungle. So if people are going to defy the laws, right, uh, law enforcement will have to kick it. Uh, as Sandral, we are not on the law enforcement side. Our mandate is to build roads. Uh, if people defy government legislation, there are certain entities and structures that will then take over and deal with mm. those people who want to, to defy the laws of the country. But what are the consequences of not um buying an e-tag or paying your e-tolls? Well, you'll basically be on the wrong side of the law, mm. right? And uh, the, those who have been given a mandate to deal with uh, people who violated the laws of the country will then have to pay the violators a visit. Uh, Sandral, that's not my space. My space is to, to build the roads. Mm. And, and we've built the roads, and we think they're beautiful. Uh, even uh, our opponents uh, do acknowledge that uh, these, these are beautiful roads. It's mm. a world-class infrastructure. We've delivered on that. And we're saying to motorists, we've delivered our end of the bargain. Can you deliver your end of the bargain? Mm. Right? This is a multidisciplinary uh, uh, project. Uh, there's law enforcers involved. Uh, we've, we've done up to where our mandate ends. Right? We're going to collect. And if people say, no, we're not going to pay, then there's other agencies in government that are going to come in to ensure that uh, the money gets collected. collected. When do we plan to kick off? Well, we're currently waiting for the president to sign the bill into law. It has passed uh, all the various stages in parliament. Uh, the president is applying his mind. I'm sure he's getting uh, legal advice on the bill. And uh, once it's ready, he'll append his signature. Um, we don't run his diary. Uh, we don't put pressure on him. So we're going to wait for him to apply his mind. But obviously, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, your, flows, your closing comment, what would you like to say to South Africans uh, uh, with regards to e-tolling and the importance of going out there to purchase their e-tags? Well, my advice to motorists, particularly here in Gauteng, is go out, get uh, yourself an e-tag. It will qualify you for discounts. It's not as exorbitantly expensive as it has been made out to be. We reckon that about 80% of Gauteng motorists will pay 100 rand or less. Um, contribute towards the building of your uh, country's infrastructure. It's the right thing to do. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Thank you. Well, there you have it. You've heard all the discussion. You've heard the entire discussion. You've heard the issues surrounding e-tolling. You've heard the benefits and uh, the pros and cons of it, according to South Africans. Let's continue this discussion. Let's speak on Google+. Plus. Let's chat on Twitter as well as on Facebook. Please join us again, Evine and Landelayo, for more thought-provoking chat right here on The Chatroom. From me, Sarah Tabete, and the rest of The Chatroom team, goodbye and God bless.